Okay, this video is going to help, um, hopefully, understand verifying trigonometric identities. And what I'll do is I'll just do a few examples to show you um, different approaches, different types of um, algebraic things that could pop up. The first thing I want you guys to know is what is an identity? So in algebra, let's say we have something like this and you're asked to solve this equation. If you were asked to solve this equation, you'd have infinitely many solutions because any value that you plug in for x here would be the same as the value here because they're the same expression. Right? Just two representations of the same thing. 2 times the quantity x plus 3 is the same expression as 2x plus 6, just in a different form. So in trigonometry, we have the same idea. We have different expressions in different trigonometric form. So when we verify identities, we have something like this where we have to prove that this side is equivalent to this side or vice versa. This, is, this would be an easy identity to prove because all we'd have to do is distribute the 2, 2x plus 6, and then I have the left side look the same as the right side, and then I would be done. Trigonometric identities, there's a little bit more... Um, a little bit more work, of course, um, and you're going to need to know some algebraic background and you're going to need to know some of your identities. So the algebra that you guys should review if you don't remember, factoring skills you're going to need, factoring GCF, trinomials, things like that, special factoring, difference of squares, perfect square trinomial, Okay, difference of squares, perfect square trinomial, those are things that you're going to need in terms of special factoring. Um, operations with rational expressions. And basically that's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Fractions, which are rational expressions with, you know, ex uh, expressions of x. Um, factoring out a negative 1, this is one of those special factoring skills. Um, conjugates, this is another topic from algebra that you're going to need to possibly use when you do verification of trigonometric identities. Complex fractions, which would go with, you know, operations with rational expressions, simplifying complex fractions. These are just some topics that you would need, you know, from algebra to help verify trigonometric identities. And then, of course, you're going to need to know your trig identities. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do probably three examples. I'm going to do a first one that's not that bad. I'll gradually get more difficult. And then, of course, if I need to um, continue <clears throat> and do more examples after that, then I will. If you guys need more examples, I'll do another video. Here's my first example. 1 minus cosine of theta divided by sine of theta is equal to cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. Now, once you have an identity, this is a trigonometric identity, and you're asked to verify that this is true, that either this expression can be manipulated into this or vice versa. You pick a side. You pick the side that's either you can see where it's going to go, you pick the more complicated side, um, the side that you see might have some algebraic manipulation, whatever it might be. Um, I'm going to choose to manipulate the left-hand side here because I see that I have something divided by a monomial. I see a little algebra. I can actually separate this into 1 over sine of theta minus cosine of theta over sine of theta. This is an algebra move. This is not trigonometric. Now, once you guys verify or are in the process of verifying a trigonometric um, identity, you choose a side. If I choose to manipulate the left side, I'm not, I'm not touching the right side. I'm not multiplying both sides by anything. The right side stays as is. This is my ultimate goal. I need to get the left side to look like that. So I'm continuing to, to copy this down because this is my ultimate goal. This is the statement. I just have to manipulate this to look like that. But I'm never pushing, putting everything across the equal sign. I'm only touching the left because that's the side that I chose to manipulate. Now, if you guys notice, um, 1 over sine of theta is actually equal to cosecant of theta. It's a reciprocal identity. And cosine of theta over sine of theta is cotangent of theta. It's a quotient identity. And therefore, this was a nice easy example. I just verified my identity. I got the left side to look like the right. 
Okay, so again, you pick a side, you touch only that side that you choose, you do not touch the other side, and you manipulate into the other side, keeping your goal in mind. Hopefully, you'll start to practice, you'll start to see um, three steps ahead where it might go, and if you're going in the right direction. So here's another one. Um, <clears throat> This is a nice one. I have secant of x minus tangent of x. The quantity squared should be equal to 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. Now this is obviously more difficult than the one previously, which is the goal. We're going to gradually get more difficult. And the reason I want to do this one is, again, I'm going to choose the left-hand side because it might be easier to manipulate this into this one. There's a little bit more algebraic manipulation I can see. And another trick with identities is if I start with trigonometric expressions that are not sine or cosine, I'm going to convert to sine and cosine first. And then see if it can simplify after that. So because I see secant x over here, I'm going to change that to 1 over cosine. Oops, sorry. Cosine x, not cosine theta. Don't change your angle. Hold on one second. No, 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 no. Okay. So secant of x is 1 over cosine of x, and tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. So let's see where this takes me, and I want that whole thing squared, and that's supposed to be equal to this. Okay, now my first step was to convert to sine and cosine, and then I'll see if there's any algebraic manipulation. And there is. If you look at the right-hand side, this is my goal. My goal is a single fraction, and right now I have two separate fractions on the left. So if I'm thinking ahead, my ultimate goal should be to bring these together. So they actually already have a common denominator for me. I don't even have to do that part. So I bring the top together and keep the bottom. And it's the quantity squared equal to 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. Now I'm looking ahead. I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking I'm going in the right direction. It's getting closer and closer to what I want it to look like, right? Keep my goal in mind. <clears throat> but here's the next thing. I have a cosine, and I want to convert it to sine somehow, because my goal only has sine in it. All right, so let's rewrite this. If I have a fraction to the second power, I'm allowed to take the numerator and square that, and then take the denominator and square that. So this is where I am now, right? And cosine of x squared is cosine squared x, right? That's how we represent cosine squared. Now, hopefully you guys recognize this right here. This is a Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. And this is perfect. If I'm thinking ahead and I know my algebraic background and I know my, um, my identities, I know that cosine squared is going to convert it into 1 minus sine squared. So that'll get rid of the cosine function and get only sine functions. And now, if you recognize the bottom, here's my algebra move. The bottom is a special factor in case it is a difference of squares. It will factor into a 1 minus sine times a 1 plus sine. And hopefully you guys see, I already have what I want. My goal is 1 minus sine of x alone on top, 1 plus sine of x alone on the bottom, and I have what I need because 1 minus sine of x times 1 minus sine of x, one of these will cancel with this one. And one of them will stay on top, 1 minus sine of x over 1 plus sine of x. And therefore, I just converted the, right hand, or the left hand side into the right hand side and I verified my identity. So I started with converting into sine and cosine first, and then I followed algebraic steps. This was a Pythagorean identity that popped up, a difference of squares that popped up, special kinds of algebraic moves, and then special trigonometric functions, trigonometric um, identities that you need to know. All right, here's another one. I have cosine of x over 1 plus sine of x plus 1 plus sine of x over cosine of x. I like this one, is equal to 2 secant of x. This is a good one. 
again, I'm going to choose a side to manipulate. And hopefully you already noticed, I'm probably going to choose the left-hand side again. Because it's probably easier to convert that into the right-hand side than trying to go from 2 secant x into this. Now, they're already in terms of sine and cosine, so I'm not going to start the way that I did in the last case. But I have, again, I'm thinking ahead, my ultimate goal is a single thing. I have two separate fractions, I'm going to have to bring them together. So I need a common denominator when I'm adding fractions. So my common denominator is the product of the two. So this guy is going to need a cosine x on the top and on the bottom, and this one's going to need a 1 plus sine of x on the top and on the bottom. Okay, now, multiply. Cosine of x times cosine of x is cosine squared of x over the bottom, which is cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And I'm going to just, oops, sorry guys. I'm going to just make a large line because I'm going to bring them together. Once the common denominator is the same, this is going to be cosine of x times 1 plus sine x plus. Bring this together, 1 plus sine of x times 1 plus sine of x is 1 plus 2 sine of x plus sine squared x, right? If you need to go ahead and foil that on the side, go ahead and foil that on the side. But it's 1 plus sine of x times 1 plus sine of x. That's a perfect square trinomial, which follows that perfect square trinomial pattern. Now this is interesting. Cosine squared plus sine squared is also a Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. Let me put that in green. So I actually have from that 1, put the rest in white, plus 1 plus 2 sine of x over cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x equal to 2 secant x. Now the thing is, I, I like the direction I'm going because it's shrinking up. I'm starting to see things, um, hopefully if you think ahead you could see where it's going to go. This one, this green one came from the fact that cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. That's a Pythagorean identity. And this one just came down and I have 1 plus 1 so I have 2 plus 2 sine of x now on the top here over cosine of x times 1 plus sine of x. And the goal, see my goal is 2 secant of x, which has a cosine on the bottom. I have a cosine on the bottom where I want it to be. I have to get rid of the sines. And hopefully you guys notice there's a GCF on top. That 2 can be factored out. And when I factor that 2 out, guess what happens? 1 plus sine of x, 1 plus sine of x goes away. And I'm left with the 2 on top and the cosine on the bottom. And if you guys know, 1 over cosine of x is secant of x. So 2 over cosine of x is 2 secant x. And therefore, I just verified my trigonometric identity. These are fun. You have to play with them, practice them. Um, don't be scared of them. Try different types. I'm going to probably do one more, and then I'm going to stop, and then you guys can, you know, if you have specific ones you want to do, you can put it in the comment box. This one I want to show for a reason I have. Sine of x. Let's do this one. Sorry, guys. There's something algebraic that I want to show you from this one. So I have cosine of x over 1 plus sine of x is equal to 1 minus sine of x over cosine of x. Always make sure that you copy it down correctly because if you copy down the wrong problem, then it would suck. I've done that before verifying a non-identity because I copied something wrong. Okay, notice that I have everything in terms of sine and cosine. So that step's not going to work. I also... Um, have a single fraction equal to a single fraction. There's not a lot of you know algebra that spits out at me. There's no multiplication, no factoring kind of situation. So when I'm in a situation like this, okay, a single fraction on the left, a single fraction on the right, already in terms of sine and cosine, 
Um, it doesn't really matter which side I choose, but I'll choose the left again. I'm going to use a conjugate. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of, in this case, the denominator. And the conjugate is 1 minus sine of x, right? Conjugates, 1 plus, 1 minus. The sine in the middle is all that changes when you're dealing with conjugates. And I multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, 1 minus sine of x. Now, on top, I'm going to have a cosine of x times 1 minus sine of x. And on the bottom, I'm going to have the product of two conjugates, which is a difference of the squares. 1 minus sine squared of x. Now, if you notice, if my goal is this right-hand side here, I need a cosine on the bottom, and I need only 1 minus sine on top. Well, I have this 1 minus sine here, so I have that where I want it to be. Got to get rid of this cosine, and I need cosine on the bottom. But if you notice, this right here is a Pythagorean identity. Cosine of x, 1 minus sine of x on the top. 1 minus sine squared of x is cosine squared of x. It's a Pythagorean identity. And hopefully you already see that I'm where I need to be. Cosine of x divided by cosine squared. One of those will cancel. And what's left? 1 minus sine x is left on top by itself. I have one of these cosines left on the bottom. And there I have verified my trigonometric identity. Boom. So again, if you guys need more examples or if there's one in particular that you're not sure how to do, put it in the comment box and I'll do it for you. And I'll make another video, maybe with more difficult situations. I'll pick some problems. But um, let me know.